Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, put this on the YouTube. So, uh, the question was whether or not, um, how does the animation different projects work? It depends on the company. If it's a large company, it could be kind of uh, efficient where you'll have a, I don't know, I guess a classic kind of business setup where you have people designated for certain duties and things that they're working on and sometimes you'll have people come in and kind of relegate to you know or update on what's going on but it could be uh, different as far as that California type of atmosphere because you have some people that are uh, I wouldn't say independent but they have the ability to kind of run their own project you know maybe the company gets some uh, you know small space somewhere and you know when you're there you're basically working at their demand in a way and some of them are structured kind of like a company uh, but some are just basically like how would I would decide how would I would describe it? I wouldn't say rogue. It's more like a like fancy free kind of thing. You, they do what they want to do here, but there is work going on. But it's not really like orderly in the sense of oh well, make sure you're doing this part, this part, and what are you working on? There's really no dialogue that goes along with that. Most of the time, it's they have people that are prop very skilled at what they do and they know what their objective is and, and what they're supposed to be doing on the project so that's what they kind of stick to and they give them I would say a rough um, kind of guideline of oh okay guys we need to have this done by this you know what I mean and in some cases they may be friends some cases not they may just respect each other and you know they're working together on something kind of like that but it's more rogue than it would be if you work like I don't know Disney or something like that where you know you have HR department you have you know designated breaks you have meetings you have discussions um, you know they want to be keyed in on you know what's going on and what we're going to be doing this week it's a lot of that kind of thing it's more like a, a structured or like a structured company would be sometimes that's good just depends on who you, you know what you like and how you feel about it sometimes it's good to have like structure where there's there's a problem you know you have HR and stuff like that some people will probably um kind of sick it just depends because there's so many different ways of doing a project where you know you can have guys that are a group of guys that are like friends or or they respect each other and they're working together on something where it's just like laid back and cool but everyone has that worth ethic where they're going to be like okay you know this is you know when we need everything done and there's a lot of peace projects like that where just like piecemeal kind of things where you know you may be working on your own thing uh, while working for another company and that could be good or bad based on if you know as long as you're not behind on your work or anything like that you know you're not stressing um, it may work out very well but they're all different so the person I was asking me about is it bad <laughs> Again, it goes back to that thing, and like people are people. I mean, you're gonna have bad and good in almost everything. But I would say if you are more on the professional side of things, you know, and people get to know who you are as far as other products you've been on or people that you work with um, by name, because a lot of these people know each other by name. So, you know, you mention a name, hey, I've worked with this person on this. You know, maybe they give a call to that person, 
um, and I'm just talking about um, bigger projects I'm not talking about like the indie type of thing uh, I'm just talking about like small projects where you may be coming in to do color or you may be coming in to kind of um, do what they call layout and or structure a story together put that kind of together um, that would be more something I'm good with as far as structure and storytelling and things like that and like the look of things so you have a lot of that and, and a lot of times that's not really it's hard to describe because it's almost like you're uh, if you were a music producer in a way where you're the arranger and you're basically saying okay we have the concept of idea okay what does this need to look like okay what world is this what character is this what is the story element what are the pieces that are going to kind of all fit together and then you kind of work with other people that have the same skill that you have and you got to shoot ideas back and forth together and it could be great doing that um you know and and i'm pretty much you know that's my wheelhouse you know what is the dialogue what should that sound like things like that so but the the more you uh and this is me finding out a lot of this stuff is like so new because the technology is out there where you don't need the studio right because you if you're able to you know draw or script or put something together on your own that wasn't something that happened uh, before like if you were in a game like a lot of the stuff was kind of an opening up and you have a lot of people that may be able to make a lot of money uh, but the nervous part about or what I'm hearing about and this is all just like my uh, some of it will be speculation but it's just my observation from what I've been seeing a lot of times when you don't have or say you have a person that has a great idea or for a story or they wrote something that's really great something different new but they don't have any backstory about okay what have you done before so a lot of these investors when you have that kind of thing and you haven't really proved yourself uh, those more than likely those investors are going to have you connect with some kind of management um, on their side because they understand deadlines they understand oh what are we spending and if it's your first kind of project they get nervous I would say uh, when it comes to that so you probably have to prove yourself if you are it just depends on how good you are at selling you know the idea um, and I think what I'm starting to see a little bit of it that hierarchy where it's like okay you know we're gonna be behind this person because this person really is doing something different and people are actually agreeing with that right so you have to kind of like deal with that um, if you haven't done anything major because they're going to want to structure everything that you're doing so whatever you do like if you're going to put out like a short piece or anything like that um, most of them know what they're doing and and you know they've been through like war stories before in the past with what I would call artists and a lot of them get nervous when it comes to that because if you're the artist you have everything in your head because you're scared to just throw everything out there for them and you want to keep every your cards close to your your chest um, yeah they're gonna be like hey you know we're giving you this amount maybe you're getting a per diem or whatever and they're gonna want to be kind of following along with um, what you're doing what you've been doing they're gonna they're gonna have some kind of management system there some kind of structure um, because that'll put them at ease when it comes to because they're basically it, it's 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 a loan <laughs> and they're hoping they get their money back in an investment so it, and, you know whenever you're speaking to them that's basically how they would look at it so I think that was should answer the question um, and this is this part is going YouTube I have to start building up this YouTube I apologize um, so some of the conversations that we maybe have I'm having 
you may come into it not un knowing what the questions were but it was just basically a question about different projects and, and how that works out in the I would say the business wise or the or the business culture of uh, entertainment and how they kind of have different ways of doing things and structure so that's that oh and for the YouTube um, people this it's, it's so crazy because in my brain I was thinking oh well all you gotta do is do the YouTube and if your videos are great and everything like that and, and you are an artist and you're trying to like get your name out there none of that matters <laughs> I just found uh, uh, that out. None of that matters. They have uh, it, it's it's a marketing thing. Uh, you need to talk to YouTube. Whatever it is, I don't care how dumb you think the idea is, or you know, let them know. Hey, this is what I'm trying to do. Uh, and without that, you're just out here. <laughs> and and whatever videos that you have out there. And whatever amount of people that are uh, watching them, you're not going to be that guy that's oh well yeah my videos are great and da 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 and I just now I have you know well I think what did they say after half I think was it a thousand people or something? it was some kind of large number to get to before they start kind of like hey you can make money doing this and. It, uh, most of my videos I didn't start out doing anything as far as commentary because like I never like commentary or let me take that back I do like instructions uh, I don't like the music I don't like because uh, you don't I have this is the thing I understand you don't know who's watching your video how do you know they like techno music or, or like why you're trying to give them instruction and a lot of times when I was going to try to, you know, when the new software comes out, I'm going to see, hey, this guy, I trust his opinion. He seems to be wise. I'll go there. And sometimes these, these videos have like music blasting in the back while they're doing things. But I'm thinking to myself, like, you don't know who this is going to. All right. Everyone has some people like country music. Some people like uh, uh, hip hop. Some people like heavy metal. It's all different kinds of people that may be. So if you're trying to get people to watch your video and you have some kind of music, I don't even if it's great music to me. Right. You may. I'll just put it this way. I've done that before. Where I went to a person's thing and they had mute techno or whatever playing while they're they're just basically drawn or whatever, I can't do it. So I really didn't do commentary or anything. I just like, hey, watch this, and that was a mistake because <laughs> uh, people want to have instructions and you know when you can just say it, you know that makes it a lot easier for them. But I am learning. So YouTube, don't think that you're going to just, you know, hey, ah, the, the video is great and he, he, you know, he speaks well and he can explain things very well and, and he could be an instructor and things like that. No, these, to get those numbers like that, you need to get with a uh, company and they have companies, which I had no, you know, don't blame me. I'm kind of late to... The only reason I'm really doing the YouTube is because I have the project that I have to kind of promote pretty soon. And I'm basically everything that I'm doing is going to be part of it. And I guess I would look at this as a commentary that may come after the feature if I can get everything I need as far as uh, the, the story's done. Everything's done. It's just talking to these guys and, you know, hooking up with people that I, I know and like talking to them and stuff like that. And anyone out there, I've already added my mind. The first whatever I'm going to do, I understand. You guys got it. Uh, Percentage-wise. I'm not going to be arguing anything super crazy. Because <laughs> uh, it's my first thing. So, uh, in my mind, I've already thought of it. So, I'm just going to give... The first thing, I'm going to give away. But I know that it'll be good. So, I'm not going to worry about having to make another one. So that's how my I've got my head wrapped around 
you know what I'll be doing in the future but I I I'm kind of late to YouTube and I thought you just start doing videos and if they're good then people will just come you know that's not how that works <laughs> at all you need to call YouTube or talk to one of their reps and they're nice a lot of them are very uh, nice people and a lot of them want to find someone who's good at whatever that's the other thing right so if they if they the, from just the talk that I had the brief one <laughs> um, what they want is constant constant videos not the thing I'm doing every time I want to do one no and this is just advice for anyone that wants to do other uh, YouTube and, and get your you know try to make money I guess with YouTube my, my thing was I wanted to get my project out there because I think when people see it it's going to be something that will be really good so you know that's the confidence I have to kind of roll with I know a lot of the stuff that I've come up with for other projects and when I tell people all the time stop doing the same things <laughs> for me that's, that's simple alright structure is always the same there's nothing surprising me anymore when you see like when I see and this might be a rant so people that are don't like rants but people can kind of see what you're going to do <laughs> there's nothing out there that surprises you some things might be done and implemented well but the dialogue I pretty much know what you're going to say all right and and once you have that where you keep doing it over and over again I don't ever think it could be a great film or a project I think it could be good because you executed it well but it's not going to be oh man did you see because I remember certain things where we, you first saw it right and I was like wow that changed everything I thought about I don't know this right so and I, when I get there I keep telling them hey stop doing that like, people are going to see through everything you're doing adventure movie again okay a ragtag group of people alright they're looking for something okay great like that's what it's become and when I'm able to kind of structure something or a story comes and, and then we're doing we're trying to do structure and we're kind of kind of putting everything together the people with the money they are so worried about I don't want to try that because that might like you know we've got this this and this and, and and I'm not saying this to like be mean to them or anything like that but this is not the, the world of hey let's do another adventure thing again or let's get a uh, you know a, a, a sword carrying character and he has a dog and, and the dog is his, like they're scared out there when it comes to doing things because they just look at um, I don't know I can't remember what they call but these numbers they just look at these numbers these little things that they, they they check clicks and and um average like what they call average view and this is things i'm learning now so i'm not an expert i'm just saying this is the things i've been studying about starting to get the youtube because of um what i'm going to be building on, on my project uh, a lot of this stuff that i'm doing now i would want it in the commentary so wherever you're listening to now it might <laughs> be there too and these are just my thoughts so it's not anybody bashing any kind of company or anything like that I, I don't my brain doesn't work like that um, so that's not what I'm doing I'm just want to pinpoint the one thing of uh, how they kind of analyze everything and um, I'm starting to understand is what they look for and a lot of times when I'm looking at 
or let me put it this way somebody that I know looks at some stuff or they get a um, some kind of documentation and they're looking at like oh you know how long was the person looking at this one thing and then the uh, AI behind all of this stuff as far as the structure they're smart in certain ways but other ways they're not and I, I have this argument with a lot of people when you go to because I have it all I have Amazon I have um, I have Disney right what they're finding out is the things that are getting me the, the most engagement are the old good stories that were told and I'm just talking about animation if you're looking at the Star Wars series people are going back to that Star Wars series uh, the animated version um, let me take that back um, I don't even know who it was produced by but that's what they're what so all of the all these little from what my friend was saying when people are getting their entertainment and they go to these things they're picking up on storytelling that is either super different and haven't been really played out in a certain way before. Um, I think I, don't, I can't forget it. It was uh, the animated short series that was on. I'm bad with names, people. I apologize. Um, I could look it up, but I'm too lazy. I don't want to do it. Um, but they're looking at everything else and what they find is people will go to something new that's different or a story that they haven't seen or maybe it's a graphics that are never seen but what they, they have two types right the ones that are going back to the old um, things that they watch over and over again over and over again going back to that same kind of you know those things that you you like because most of the time when I go on Amazon and I go on uh, Netflix Netflix for me is a little bit better because you can see a variety of different things that just pop up from all different places right and I may be wrong anyone um, that's on the our feed or our Twitter thing or whatever I apologize YouTube I will get that up where you can kind of engage with us um, why am I seeing the same movies over and over again from the past nothing new but the new things what is it, like 5 or 6 or stuff like that for Amazon so I don't know if it's a, if they've like structured a way where they're like oh we'll get to the point where just everybody out there is just a entity and we can use our platforms to put it on because they have more eyeballs which is what they should be doing but I'm not excited when I see I go there and I'm looking at the same movies and same thing over and over again because what they're finding out is that people um, and this this could be wrong as well um, once they ab absorb the, whatever new thing that they think is going to be good for, for the the series or whatever they go back to the old things that they like to watch and they do it often more often than they are picking up oh this new series or whatever that somewhat is good right so and then the video games the ones that are able to put something t t together for the video games and, and get that kind of going and you know storytelling and I try to give the example about what I want to do is similar to the arcane in a way it's not going to be something you've seen before and I know how to really structure a story and from what I'm seeing of what people are talking about that's what it has to be so different and good at the same time right so you hope they'll come back to it later on Wire was one is wire. I think I missed. And was it? A, yeah, it was a wire. But um, yeah, they're saying people are going back once they get whatever that new thing is that they like. They're going back to the old things that 
they, they love. So, gotta get, start giving other people options and taking chances on things. And I think that the people that are good at what they're doing as far as their art and structuring stories, those will be the people that stand out. And those will be the people that you're waiting for, like, you know, everyone's waiting for uh, Arcane to come, right? Certain things you're waiting, you're like, oh man, I can't, can't wait. What was the other one that was kind of had me waiting? Uh, Invincible, the first part of it. <laughs> I know what the, I know what the problem was with the second part because they were... They, I don't think they were ready from the rumors that I was hearing. Yeah. Like, but they were like, "Okay, we have to have put something out, right?" So there was that. I think the third part of this is going to be the makeup for what the structure was for uh, part two of it. So, um, but yeah, when I first saw the first part of it, it was great, and I was waiting for the, the, the second installment, not saying it was bad, but it wasn't like the first part, and I wanted to listen to, a lot of people that saw the books, they were upset with certain things, and people tell me if that's true out there, I never read the books. I heard about it, but I never read it. What was I talking about before? I got sidetracked. Oh, come to me later. attention to politics <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't like answering stuff like that because I really don't uh, to me a lot of it's aggravating I feel they're getting uh, they just play the same it's almost like the same music and then people are surprised but you know hey, if you can get a job where you just talk to people and stuff like that it's a great position to have but yeah, I don't, I don't have an opinion on things like that. Not that I like, you know, care if you do. Everyone, uh, it's America. I wonder if we can have the same dialogue on YouTube and have them like here while we're just doing stuff. Try to figure that out as well. Gotta call that person back. Um, but this is supposed to be structural for the YouTube. Um, so on this YouTube, um, I think this is the third part of a three-part thing that I was doing. Uh, on this one, we're going to do a little bit of... What was it? I think it was the character part on the back background stuff. Uh, oh, the music. Yeah, setting up a scene for the, the, the music. Yeah, we'll do that on this one. I'm going to finish a little bit more. This background thing here. And then we'll get to that. And I'll show you what I mean by tone and things like that. The other one was supposed to have commentary, but I cut it out at the last minute. I apologize about that. I think that was part two that I kind of messed up a little bit. But had to work, had to eat. <laughs> Can you just work on my stuff? Um, but I do appreciate everyone watching the videos. And I, um, whenever my project comes out, I'm going to try to definitely, definitely, definitely have 
some kind of, uh, especially for the people that first started watching the videos, I gotta uh, figure that part out. But I guarantee you that whoever is watching my videos from the beginning, there will be a reward. If this project comes like I think it's gonna come, I am going to show love to the people when I only had, uh, I don't know, like 50 subscribers on the YouTube thing. And I don't take people paying attention to what I'm doing for granted. So, there's that. <laughs> but I appreciate it. it. Makes me, sometimes when I'm, I don't know if I should say it in a certain way because I don't want people to take that up sad or anything like that. But sometimes if I have a, like a hard work day or I'm doing something or I'm learning something. When you go to YouTube and so you, hey, that many people actually watch the video. That's all I really care about. That's all I look for. And I'll go back to it. Oh, this time it's, you know, 12. It was 6 before. You know what I mean? I look at that. <laughs> it makes me feel better. Because in my mind, it's just like, oh, well, that's not a lot of people. Well, to me it is. If you if you have I don't know if you have ten people that are your friend, you know that to me that's a lot. That's too much for me, for me personally. Like, cause I have friends that are friend friends, not like hey I know you. Let's go to this place. But to have seven, ten, I don't care how many people watch it. It's like if if it's that many, good. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's how I look at it. I don't care about. It. Well, I do care now because I have to. I got to get these business people <laughs> to to really trust that I know what I'm doing. So I have to do like a short film kind of thing coming up and prove my point. So I do need more subscribers. So that's why I called the YouTube guy. That would be an awesome job because I don't know how, how does they work when they get paid because it's almost like that's all you do. You just got to talk to people that call about how to get better with YouTube. And they're not, well I shouldn't say that. I don't know if they've been YouTube before and they figured out some kind of you know thing. But from what I see, they're just regular employees and they have a, uh, a way of kind of marketing that. YouTube kind of thing, you know. Do 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 do. So, so oh, you just sit around waiting for people to call. Huh? All right, cool. They pay you for that? Yeah. Awesome. Can you help me? <laughs> oh, that's what it was. Um, so YouTube, they want consistency. Um, they want to see a video, a video a day, or two. They want you engaging with the people that are your subscribers. And I apologize. I didn't know anything about like I just like when people say, hey, I like your video. They want you engage with whoever is subscribing to you. So I will be working on that. So if you subscribe to me and I haven't said or if I haven't reached out or, or you know, checked your page or whatever, uh, I'm going to be doing that next week. So everybody that is subscribed, I'll go into detail a little bit about that and I'll try to put it on, put it up and everything like that. Um, but that was one of the things they were saying, uh, engagement, meaning that, you know, whoever subscribed to you, just don't be like, oh, okay, another scrap. You need to be, you know, immersed with that kind of thing. You need to engage with them because they, they've actually took the time to subscribe. So I'll be working on that. And I will, once kind of explained it in a way I started to get it a little bit started to make a lot of sense because you don't really have to subscribe you can just watch the video so but I will be working on that coming up very soon and you um oh and the in the project part of it I think that's what I was going to if I got sidetracked so whenever I do pull out the I'm I'm Basically, it's going to be a rough draft. It's probably going to be 10, 15 minutes um, of the first part of the story. Uh, so whenever I do that, you guys will get that uh, first. 
and we're trying to figure out how to package that. I don't just want it on a YouTube video. I want it to be able to send it to people and be like, okay, this is the first copy of this, you know, thing. I'm trying to figure out that how to do that. But for the subscribers, what I'm wanting to do is you're gonna get the you'll end up getting a full one, but you'll have it a lot earlier. It'd probably be a little bit rough, not finalized, but you will be able to see what I'm talking about when I come when when I say that I'm I think I got a, a great idea. So I will be showing that to uh, you guys first, and I will send those out um, like a digital copy, and I will have your uh, your information on there that says, "Hey, this person subscribed or whatever," and and I will. Should I say that? Because what if there's more subscribers after that? You know what? I don't care. If it takes a year to do it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Whoever subscribed, I'm gonna do that. So I will I will have that feature out. It will be a special feature. It won't be everything you can get on YouTube or on the our dialogue platform. It is because YouTube I'm late to, so I don't really have you know many people there. So you guys will get that. You will get the personalized uh, piece of the story and you will get it first hopefully you won't put it out there well at that point it won't matter because I'll, I'll have everything I need as far as that but you guys will get it first and you will have a personalized copy saying thank you very much uh, Mr. Mr. Blank and this is going to be coming out very soon and you can put it where you like I don't care I'm very confident that's the only one thing I'm confident about when it comes to structure of story and then how I want everything to look so it's not um, what do you call it like I'm not bragging about it but I, I think you guys will enjoy it I'll just put it like that but I'm not I'm not a bragger like that uh, just took me a while to kind of get confident enough to kind of do it you know without begging people please give me this much and maybe I'm not supposed to do it that way you know maybe it's gonna make a lot of money so I'm not supposed to share it <laughs> it's a joke <laughs> that's a joke and really I haven't really shopped around I, I really don't like rejection first of all and then a lot of those guys, I don't think will get it what I'm doing. So I gotta show them first, and that's what this YouTube is gonna be for. I don't know if I can get a thousand people to kind of. For me, oh, you can get a thousand easy. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> like, but I think the. The way he was saying it, it's because of what they may do as far as like, once they feel that your videos are, are a certain standard and stuff like that, uh, and that you have a, what do you call, what do you call, structure to the way that your videos are put together, uh, and they feel like you are doing not what I've been doing, a video whenever, so maybe that's what they were talking about. But let's go ahead and get away from this so I can get to the music section of it. I'll work on this stuff later. And you know what? Let me finish a little bit more. It won't matter to you guys, I don't think. I'm going to fast forward. I will get to the audio parts and everything like that. And the videos. Just a little bit more. before I go night it is 2 38 a.m. Friday 27th oh someone was asking me about uh, my drawing and what do I do after the drawing uh, uh, I'll give you I think I went through this before uh, for playground you, you have the ability to um, basically upload 
um, whatever image that you could draw and once you upload it they'll give you variations of this so if I'm which helps out a lot so if I draw something right and instead of basically drawing uh, I don't know four five different frames of one thing you know what I'm gonna show you now I think I can do that let's do it with this uh, so and I will show you exactly what I mean Select all, and this isn't even f finished. Uh, copy. All right, and we go to my trusty Inkscape. Oh, I forgot about this part. I forgot I was working on that character thing. I will be working on the full rig for characters as well. A lot of the time when I'm showing things, um, they're really not finalized. I would just say it like that. So, but I will I will show, or I may be able to, be able to send out a full, so if you have Moho, uh, I may be able to f uh, send you out a, uh, well, I was, I, yeah, that was the same. I think I changed the color, did I not? I can't remember. Does that look like I want it to look? Uh, can't remember if I did this on the other one. But I will um, fully rig, which is a hard thing to do. But once you get it, it's completed. Uh, and when I say full rig, I'm talking about it probably be all front facing, rear facing, and then uh, like a quarter, or what is it, three fourth uh, facing character. I will, uh, I can send that to anyone that has Moho or if you're using, I can't remember if, let me see. Adobe Char yeah, I think I can do it in Adobe Character, but I'll basically rig it out and I'll send it out. It'll be a full thing, and you can just change the faces as you wish. Were these the eyes I wanted? I can't remember. changing it well, just a reminder of what this is supposed to be I'm bleeding and this is nothing this is just for me uh, it's a reminder for me because uh, this character I'll, sometimes I forget what thing I'm in what we're doing Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> Why do I work so late? Uh, I'm night out. Sometimes when you're doing art and stuff like that, you can set your own kind of like hours. So when you are lucky enough to be working on something, or someone's about something's about to finish. Or if your head with something uh, can work out well sometimes. So I don't have like a oh I go to bed at, I don't have any hours like that where I go to bed or whatever at you know X amount of day time. So I kind of get away with doing whatever time I want. Too many documents open. How much stuff do I have open? We got the music thing. Yeah, we got a lot. Just checking to make sure that the uh, HP didn't cheat me like they did before. 
this will be able to do a lot. And uh, uh, HP has been good. I shouldn't say that, but there was one uh, rep that I was. Tr Whenever you're doing any kind of graphics or anything like that, you have to have a very, 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 very uh, high uh, graphics because it's a lot. And someone was asked me that before, uh, like, how are you able to run all of these things at once? Uh, you look at it; it's a lot. Let me see if I can show you. But HP does it the best for me personally. Um, so these are my drawing things. So if you look at Inkscape, right, and you can look at this one here. It's almost a, a gig. Uh, you got the Moho, which is about half a gig. Uh, paint. So that's about two, three, four. But if you look at everything else, so look at all of these numbers here, right? So technically, I shouldn't be able to draw anything, <laughs> like, and have that many things running. But HP does a great job when they, uh, when you tell them exactly what you're trying to do, they're very good at uh, doing that for you and getting that set up. So no shade to the uh the hp people out there it was just one of your reps got me one time <laughs> i knew right away it was like i was trying to load up uh what was it adobe i think and something else i, I think it was it might have been inkscape and that thing was like oh it's not doing anything it's not, it's not like you're you're not supposed to be these so these when we're talking about frames and everything like that and and having a lot of memory you know you'll know right away and I did as soon as I loaded up I think it was was it might have been Photoshop but once I uh, loaded it up or whatever um, I was like no because it just slowed down started drawing and it was like uh, no so for me personally HP has been a great great friend So let's go ahead and do what I said I was going to do. And we're going to put this into Playground. I'm going to show you what it what it's going to do for you here. Any drawing that you have. Most of the time it's themed. You got to make it kind of small though. A lot of the things I'm doing is very large and I do that because I use this as a storyboard I'll have everything like next to each other uh, so move some of this out the way And I use it for storage for like all my pieces that I need when I am doing the animation. So I can always come back to this one thing and all my pieces are all kind of uh, together. And so usually what I'll do is I have a lot of different storyboards. So technically this will be one. And then this would be two. And then underneath I put the... Uh, the character search uh, associated with that frame so these will be all my pieces that I use and I just do the whole uh, sometimes if I have too many things it will kind of slow down but most of the time it won't so I and these are large files these are not small files as well And this just kind of helps me remember what is what and where the character needs to be. 
and they're all my stuff that I play around with or you know I've already outlined the drawing that I need most of the time um, when you see me drawing and paint that's not the final uh, it and and I'm ver people who uh, I'm very aware of what, what the rough looks like especially when I'm doing these uh, using moho uh, you will see a very clean version of and, you know I think I did another video where I added some like a video in the background or something like that it was just a rough interpretation of uh, what that was so but yeah every time uh, everything becomes vectorized and then I do the color uh, and I save it and I'll have to redo that character again or I can take pieces from one and use it for another and keep everything kind of neat and orderly so to speak and um, you always need one eye I meant to tell someone that you don't have to make two <laughs> I don't and I think I, I've never I don't think I've ever done that but if I have that was a crazy thing I think someone asked me about it I don't make two of anything if I draw it out and I can kind of suss out how it should look or if you know I'm, I'm you know doing the vector outline I'm gonna basically cut uh, I'm gonna cut the face in half I'll do one side of the face vectorize and then I'll split it and make it a full face uh, it'll just save you time and something whenever you're doing a lot so and that's just for me I'm not saying that's how you should do it you know that's how I usually uh, kind of set it up because all the pieces are uh, I like the way they have to really look clean for me and it does take a lot a uh, long time to do with some of them but once you do, you do it you don't really have to go back to it at all You're just kind of like oh okay these are all the things I have I'll be able to use this or change the face a little bit and then use all all the you know all the parts vector parts that you've already created we're gonna get rid of all of this junk this is just me playing around and I don't really need it cut and I think this is a different eye so I do need that is it a different eye? let's see I think it is let's make sure though Drum roll. See if it's the same eye. And cut. Do right. I got it kind of neat the way I like it? One frame two. Character's head is missing for that. And this frame here. I think we change that because this angle will go sideways when it gets hit. So, and this just remind me. Um, and most of the time when I'm using Inkscape I'm using it for the storyboard most of the time nowadays but I also use it to vectorize what I need to, to vectorize uh, and I'll sh I guess I can show you real quick won't be a big deal it's be a long video I guess um, so basically you'll go here where it says uh, trace bitmap and that's what this is whenever you, I draw this in uh, uh, paint because paint is not vector so whatever I draw in paint I can bring here and what I'll, you'll do is uh, colors how many colors is basically how many colors do you think this is comprised of scans same kind of thing right you, I don't know is it less better for less scans basically I, I have always kept the color and the scans the same because it breaks it down into 13 different um, colors and I'll show you that real quick here so you'll just click on this make sure this is a color here remove background meaning that whatever is white it's going to uh, let me see it's gonna uh, it'll be become invisible 
so technically if I imported this and then I did have the eyes drawn like this let's see here alright so yeah we'll do this one alright so you have it drawn the white and everything like that so whenever you do uh, say remove background that's what it's doing it's not removing the background it's just removing anything that's white uh, in the background there's a lot of other things here that you can kind of play around with I don't really care about that because we're just using an experiment. Smooth just means it's a lot smoother. Alright, so click here. Then we're going to click OK. Alright, there we go. And now it's a vector. Alright. Now, I don't keep my vectors like this because I am pretty much it's going to look for the outline. And then I will probably use the thinnest outline I can for like the, the face and then I will mm, that's close enough or if I have to redraw it I would but what I do is all of these pieces will be separate alright so what happens is when you do the 13 scans it's it's looking for each individual color this could be more but I'm just using this example so takes you know so if the hair is like this it'll take you will know, have a little bit of this color in it this color right so all anything that's blending and it'll separate it out and if you can tell now right so the character's eyes were white right it does not have anything that'll be white so let's take this right because you see the white eyes it'll remove the white so that's usually what will happen sometimes if I'm trying to get uh, most of the time I want it to be vector and I want it to be perfect so uh, I will show another video how to fix this where it's not like you have this major cleanup thing um, but I just want to show you the, the color breakdown of what it does whenever you do uh, same thing that I think um, uh, Adobe Illustrator does the same thing. They have a, a same way of doing it. Same color breakdown, but um, this does give you choices. I think the new Inkscape, they have a, a better feature that can pretty much get these cleaned up a little bit more. Uh, so, you know, look out for that. What? That's that for now. Alright. So get out of here let's go to the old internet uh, enable see how fast it changes no connection no connection one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven huh it's weird didn't do that before Let's go ahead and why is this taking so long? Uh, there you go. Great. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, so this is uh, playground. It's an AI. Whatever you describe in here is basically what the, the, the illustration is going to create for you. But we're not going to do that here. We're going to show you what happens. Uh, and I don't recommend using any of these backgrounds because you would have a lot of cleanup to do because it's always weird looking some of them. But if it, you want to spark the idea. So we'll, uh, we'll upload an image here. And it was what we where is the other one? What we true? Uh, 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 I can't remember what it was. What did we do? Text maybe. Uh, 
Where did I export that? Hmm. Okay, he said use it. So uh, image strength, basically the higher this is, uh, the closer it will be to your image. So I'm going to go ahead and click this to, I don't know, 55. And we're going to have four different variations of it. Don't worry about this. Uh, I'll show that in a different video. It's a breakdown. Uh, these are different choices here. The first one we're going to use is this. And this is just basically how the AI, what they use as far as creating the image. All right, so let's go back to the original drawing and there we go all right so that's good yep i think that's i don't like this this is too small this should be 12 uh, 7 and we'll do 7 4 uh, Yes. Yeah, let's do seven. Well, you know what? Yeah, I'll be okay. that should be okay. And uh, then we'll click the. It's, don't worry about this description because it's not going to match the picture. It's hopefully old. The strength is so high, forty nine. It's not. It's going to ignore all of this. Uh, the prompt guideline. I'm sorry. Prompt guideline. Uh, prompt guidance the higher this is the more it's going to uh, stick to your description All right lower it is the less it will stick to your description and that's what we're going to do because we want I'm just showing you how to whatever drawing you have it'll create uh, variations of it so we'll put that to about five we'll see how that goes there and uh, speed and quality most of them are very uh, great quality, but you have to put that in your descriptors as well. So basically, it's taking this image and this description and it's going to meld it together. So this is at 49, and I lowered this guidance, right? So I want it as l a lower guidance, uh, prompt guidance, because I don't want it to look like the other images, right? And then as far as the image strength, I want that higher. So let's go see. It's going to make four different images, which is this here. Um, this is the pro version, uh, which allows you to go up to eight different images that it will create for you. All right. So let's click create. Mm, 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 mm. Um. Uh. What was that? Uh. No. Bus it's uh, Comcast Business. Um. Strength. Because sometimes I gotta send out packages and stuff like that. All right. So there we go. So basically, it is your image. It's just basically uh, giving you different variations of it. The reason why the snows there is because it again it's merged into. Um, but you can see like a lot of different things are different so usually what I would do here is you can change those those outlines or whatever it is right so you don't want to sit there and draw different like side areas right so if a uh, you know once your characters in play right say you want to go f away from just the um, this just this camper scene or whatever, right? You want to see different parts of the. Basically, this is a junkyard. Um, it'll give you the ability to kind of work with this and kind of move things around as you want. So that's the way uh, you can 
using. We'll do a different image. Let's see here. Uh, upload something different here. Let's see. that other one mm, oh there it is all right well higher image strength here you know what yeah we'll do it there all right and create All right, so original image, right? We got this very high to 53. So why it looks so much similar. Now let's go ahead and lower the strength of the image to 16. Prompt guide it. Go to the you don't really have to go high with it. AI is pretty good. And create. You can see the difference between those two. They call playground. They've been taking this. That's coming up. And again, this is the pro version. This is not the. It's the free trial version. All right, there we go. So you see how the original image is this, right? So now it's going to pull from the description. Uh, a lot more so yeah, I just want to show that so whatever you draw you can stick it in here and it'll change everything for you or if you want to leave the same it'll do that as well so all right so go back to what I was doing I can't remember what I was doing what was I doing I did this Delete. I think this was on the last YouTube thing I did. Delete. And delete. Alright. Oh, this was what I was working on for the other one. I got it now. Okay. So, we're going to delete. Is there anything I need in here? Yeah. Delete. this and we can delete that and that and what was this is this not the background this is not needed delete this over oh that was the other thing I was making sure those two eyeballs weren't the same alright so let's go ahead and add that background so we'll finish do 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 do
direction. What did, wasn't I looking at two different? Okay, there we go. Yeah, these are different. Can't remember if it was that one or not. What was it? We did this in the other video. I'm changing the other one. Still giving me a weird vibe. I don't know what it is. I'll, I'll change it later. Okay, what was I doing next? Uh, you know what? Let me go and finish this part and then I'll get to the music. October Halloween Getting too close to these holidays coming up. What do I do? Okay. How long is this video? Uh, is that one hour fourteen? Okay, that's not bad.
Um, I was supposed to do the music on the last video, but again, I had a lot of stuff going on. But uh, I'll, I'll go into it a little bit. Basically, um, when it's, it, some of it is transitional music, meaning that you know you're ending a scene or starting a scene. It depends on what it is. Uh, but it always kind of the, the same. Most of our earplay and what we think about when we think about music, uh, it's hard to get away from because we. Most of the time, the music is identical when you're watching a movie or things of that nature. So there's certain things that when we hear it, it we associate it with a certain kind of feeling or idea, and that's kind of the the basic part of you know adding. Uh, and I think I make a mistake on YouTube, not soundtrack. You you can do that as well. But um, like background stuff. Can I use this thing on the other one? I can't remember. the other side of it, yeah, I think it was 684 was that start number. be getting sleepy and lose train of thought. Oh, uh, music transits. So, you, when, um, I'm, I'm probably just going to show a couple of them, the transition parts for the music and we'll pick, look at a couple of different pictures or whatever. Lay that out. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, I think I said this before when people were asking me about drawing in this thing. Uh, I stack them because basically, if I'm have a line I don't like, I can just uh, pull it out and 
So that's why I usually stack them on front or back. Sometimes the front. Just depends. And then when I'm carving out or something, I don't really want to have to deal with the uh, the shadows if I can't get it the way I want it. So, uh, but you you'll see me do that a lot because I like to sometimes I'll change it. just depends and again you don't have to be very detailed uh, whatever I'm doing is just because I'm insane I mean I, I see a, a lot of different things whenever I'm uh, you know I want it to be a lot cleaner than sometimes you can get it And another reason is this. So whenever you do make that line, if you look here, so we got the dark line, right? And I'll use the uh, the blur to kind of blend it in, like I want it. Most of the time, it's a little bit darker, but on this one, it'll some of the shadow will be a little bit lighter coming on the other side. And whenever you do that when you take this away it'll just disappear and everything is stacked so if you want to maybe change an angle or change you know how something kind of looks you, could, you have the ability to keep doing it uh, that way until you get it to where you want it and um, for me once I build it out and I don't want to change anything. I keep everything once I vectorize it. So it gives me the ability to have that template if I need to go back to something or add something. Or use a kind of like same clothing theme uh, more than once. But yeah, you can, um, you know, use the blur whenever you're kind of figuring out how you want it to look or get it as close as you can. And then you put your, you know, the highlights and the shading. That can always, sometimes I'll do that in um, Inkscape. Sometimes I won't. Just depends. But once it's vectorized, I am happy. Because it looks so clean. I guess I could go over a little bit of that too, whatever you're like shading or add something. Um, there are techniques that they have. It's up to you if you use them or not. But most people, you know, highlights on the edges based on, you know, if you want it to pop a little bit more. And there's ways of showing depth and with like shadows as well. So you have that ability to do that. But these are like just what I would guess. If you ever went to art school, it's basically a lot of shading and shadowing stuff. And we'll uh, unflat an image, and that's what we kind of use it for. I'm saying we, like I own the school. <laughs> Everyone uses it, I'll just say it like that. But yeah, those are just, you know. So if you always think about the edge of something, it's either going to be one or the other. Alright, so technically if I wanted to make this uh, inside, I would make the uh, the shadow uh, on this line, this inside line. Alright, so let's play around with it a little bit here. Make it a little bit bigger. Alright, so... So 
so basically if this is the inside and this is the um, basically on top you would have the reverse so a little bit lighter uh, right about there looks good so basically you'll have this make it a little bit uh, you'll have this here so basically that's what the edge would be All right so if this edge here is light as far as the framing it makes it look like this is on top of this part here but that's not what we're doing here on this so this is not going to be on top this will be on the inside so this is the this part here is where you'll have basically pop out on the edges here and then there should be a shadow like this line here and it gives this depth um, you can go darker usually I don't it's not necessary to go darker it just depends on the scene and how you want it to look and then your artistic you know whatever you like to, it, it to be it's never any rule well there are fundamental rules but there's no rules to how you want uh, your illustration to kind of look up to you and no one's wrong <laughs> and um, a lot, if you ever watch any of these I can't remember I'm losing my train of thought it's the show with all the wacky kind of on comics, Comedy Central. I can't think of it now. But if you look at those, some of the pop popular thing, it's because the artist is like has their own. It's not making you know looking down on it. It's just I just want to run, you know, let, drill that home a little bit and go back to what I would say. It's going to be about story. So if you draw a square or whatever the like when you see you know drums like gumball gumball ball or whatever or um i guess you could look at south park is like that as well you don't have to draw a certain kind of thing uh when whatever you're doing as far as the writing and the storytelling doesn't matter what it looks like people you know will draw to it they like it and that'll be the end of it. So it's all up to you. I think when I was a younger, it used to like everything you draw is like a square. But some of the things that you know, if you're drawing around, you'll have your own style of way things are kind of look. Uh, what was that? I, uh, Okay, yeah. And I promise I'll get to the uh, the music one second. One second. You know what? I can't remember if I want that angle on the other side. I don't know. We'll leave it alone for now. And the same thing here. Um, so, if you look at what this technically this edge would be, right? So, if you're looking at this here, technically this will go down, and it'll be a little bit lighter on this point at the end. 
but what it does is it sent, uh, accentuated like this part here is tucked in a little bit and then on this here you would just do the highlights you don't have to do it all the way to the back part of it what's going on oh <laughs> this, you know so it'll be something like this and it'll be a lot lighter for this little edge like so and you would make this a little wider for the outline and then this would be on the end of it so you have to technically look like that all right you can shade it in later it's all up to you uh, but that's how it technically should be if you're trying to uh, have depth and different things like that Um, whenever I do do the like the vectorize, uh, just be careful. Like if you don't, if you can kind of remember all the colors you were using, uh, that's a great thing. And in in paint, whenever I. Uh, did I want that on the other side? Donald's right about there. Uh, yeah, I think so. And again, um, you can always go back to the uh, the blending. So for this layer here, go to effects, little blur. And it'll just give that touch of, you know, a little bit fabric. So I'm right about, uh, not too, right about here, I guess, like so. And then if you like, you can always go back and do what I call like highlight colors, where you just kind of use your paintbrush you you know add little things here and there or trying to understand like what, what the fabric technically would look like in certain scenarios uh, and then you can use the blur on that as well so it's all up to you and on the character sheets I think I did the breakdown on that before but Uh, remember, you can just always make changes on whatever you like. Yeah, it is hurricane here in Florida. <laughs> can never be on the safe side. Sometimes I guess you can. It just depends. And always, 
Yeah, but it always rains. We're so close to the uh, the water, so our turnaround is a lot faster. Anywhere where it's surrounded by water, because it's always constantly close in line. Um, so on this as well, like whenever you're trying to make something uh, kind of thick, you can do this here, and it'll basically, if you think about what, uh, like a belt, it'll have a little light little piece that should go there technically, and you would make that kind of pop out on the outline. If you're trying to brighten up like that edge part, you can do that different ways. So if you think about the stitching on what would be technically a leather belt or whatever, it has that little, you know, those little stitchings on the the outside a little bit. So that's what you would use it for. And then you can again you can use the blend and it'll you know if you don't want it too too you know stark. Uh, you can do that and again whatever you like mm -mm -mm -mm. and once everything's vectored the shadow and stuff you can always go back and uh, change that and nothing's kind of set in stone. promise we'll, we'll get to the music one second here What was I doing on this? Was it a uh, I think it was something different. Oh, I remember. Yeah, that's right. It was on the other side, so this technically would be a lot darker. Okay, I remember. Play around with that later.
not the gold player on it, but the under. back and fix that later and uh no one do this because <laughs> it doesn't really matter to a lot of people what the necklace of your thing is but again it's all part of perspective oh that was the head i was working on that trying to Once it gets vectored, we are good. Uh, might change that later. Some of the stuff I do in uh, Inkscape, like make buttons, I'll show you that in a minute here.
Which is not needed. Messed up. I see where I messed up. It's too, it's too close. So, uh, 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 yep. Uh, we'll mess with it a little bit later. Let's finish the head part. be cutting this part out so I'm going to just do the head part and then we'll get to the uh, the music and the only thing here uh, I'm going to do is we're going to separate the uh, the head part from the other. Which 
one did what is it okay oh yeah I was like what the hell all right And technically, you don't have to keep the hair separate at all. Depend on what you want to do. And I'm just doing this for my uh, template later. Won't really matter. Okay. And again, uh, this will be vectorized as well. Oh. And uh, to get the, the kind of cleaner look that you want, as far as the uh, the vector, you know, you can cut up a lot of lines. It's up to you. Um, because we're going to keep the the head separate. Again, uh, on the eyes, you can add the shadow now. I'm not going to do it because I'm going to do all my other stuff in Inkscape. So I'm just going to keep this as bare bones as possible. So when we do vectorize it, it only should be uh, how many colors. I'm going to take the eyes out. So black, brown, and then the fading. Uh, again, you can do that. 
you know, what are we gonna like to get it the tone you like you can mess around with that as well and when do you do make the like the template heads uh, you can keep them for for a long time so you just sometimes you can change the structure of the head or you know maybe it's more of a less round or oval like kind of thing but we're using this template for whenever we do you know, use the uh, Inkscape to kind of vectorize everything and it'll look a lot cleaner so show you that there we go I think that's it yeah so and again um, so this hair would be basically there so when we go back and we get everything nice and clean we'll probably have scenes when the hair is blowing and then we don't want the head and the hair blowing so that's we keep it separate so let's go ahead and get this copy here All the template heads, you can just keep them in there too. So you like it, you have your old package there. So let's go ahead and you know what? we'll take this out of here as well. Oh, I forgot about the legs. I can't remember. play around with that later because I change it a little bit and this would be one of the ones you would keep separate anyway but uh, I always want to see what uh, it looks like whenever everything is pieced together uh, on this one technically so the knees here but I'm gonna have like a little you know shadow right there underneath the, where the knee would be just basically for the fabric so now that we got this one here what we can do is we'll just duplicate it like so and we'll grab it here and you'll just reverse it like that all the shadows and different things like that you can kind of do that as well but for now yeah see how the angles is kind of bothering me like I would cut that piece off or I might leave it like a pale fabric but let me see what was this I was doing here I think was it the boot part it's up to you whenever you do draw it out um, let's go ahead and merge everything here so we're just going to merge this piece we'll work on it a little bit later clean it up um, but we're going to end up having this cape separate and this cape separate as well and it's just all the shading and other stuff we added here so when I do merge it basically merges I'm sure there's nothing else here so alright okay cool so we'll merge that, that as well. So let's get that done. One, two. Alright. And next. Um, 
we could merge it again. Okay, there we go. We'll merge it again. And these are all just the outlines and shading and all that stuff kind of put together. Okay. What else am I merging? Yep, that too. And there we go. So all our little shadow and everything like that we did. We'll just merge it down on top. Like that. Go ahead and grab it. How long is this video? Uh, 206. We'll keep going. Make sure we got everything in my gloves. So, alright. Edit copy. And edit paste. And again, we're not going to vectorize it. Uh, we'll come back and do shadows and stuff like that. Whenever you do the shadows, most of the time, I'll we'll just play around with it real quick. Paint buckets. And whatever I do this, I'm doing it because I'm going to be uh, using bending everything part of that when I create this line right here you can't do that it's basically going to give you like a square where you can't really adjust it so whenever you <laughs> someone's like what is he doing um, what I do is basically make a piece like this and I'll usually make a lot of them but I, I'll do it the shading because I'll, I'll change it a little bit so we'll basically if we match this color or as close as we get it right whenever we do our shadows and you know your pants whenever they wrinkle they have that little line and that's what that would be so it would be a little kind of bright line that's close enough for now And basically, when you do your shading, you can keep it that way. But whatever you want to do as far as the template, you can change it up. Wherever you want the wrinkles to be. And again, you can always be, if you want to blur it, you can do that as well. So it'll give you that kind of a blur effect. Um, usually, a lot of times, I'm not going to do the blur effect if it's just a like a real you know what the hell uh, basic thing I won't do it um, but and again when you vectorize this you'll be able to play with you know different shadows and stuff like that um, but this piece I would basically uh, duplicate it and then you know move it around a little bit and use these little slices to kind of get um, you know our highlights and everything like that we'll do another one on the other side and these are all the spots where you know you know stand out a little bit because of uh, the wrinkle that is basically a, a wrinkle for the shading everything else I'll clean up later but again you could also like whenever I do do buttons stuff like that so it's real simple you don't have that again your black outline sometimes buttons are like that a little bit thicker like so and uh, again
again. I'm gonna do what I usually do here. Um, whenever I make pieces, I, I usually will use the uh, the paint bucket, like you see me doing the other thing, to make a little piece. And then uh, on the shading part, what color should these buttons be? Not red, right? Uh, I don't know. Maybe a little. burgundy kind of I don't uh, like uh, that too close to the other part all right I will keep it for now so um, on the button part it's up to you if you're doing something flat you don't really need to have a lot of um, change this color but it's going to do that okay And then it's going to be to your like your liking, whatever you think will uh, look best as far as the button. Uh, need that many. And then you can uh, blur it. Like so. And it'll give that uh, edge image. But on top of that, sometimes it'll have that shiny part. You know what I mean? Like that on the outside. And sometimes these are, uh, I'll make them a little bit brighter for the reflection. Something alright. Like. And you can make that as thick as you want, it's up to you. So, whenever you do the edge, depending on how much you want to do, you can just do it that way. If there was an angle, this doesn't have to be straight. You would have a, a, a like a slither piece here. Let me see. I'll just do it. Edit. Duplicate. Turn. And so. And. So you would have that little. Kind of like a piece where it looks like it's viewed from the side. Let me these and cut. And you have that option. I mean, on this doesn't really matter because I'm not going to have that. But yeah, you can do it that way as well. And then our buttons. Too big for my liking. like the spacing but well, play around with that later um but this would have the shadows and everything like that underneath as well and just make as many as you like duplicating everything you know what I don't let's see Maybe I'll make them silver. Yeah, I might do that. Fade that out a little bit. Mm, let's should this outline be darker? Oh, 
keep it same color. What does it look like from the backdrop? change my mind. So let's get that out of here. And what was that? Oh, okay. So um this piece here, the breakdown would be uh, these sleeves. And on this here I will keep this separate uh and probably cut that out because I probably wouldn't want it to be too stiff and whenever the uh, the head moves this would probably give it like a little kind of wiggle or whatever like so I don't I don't really want it where the body is all that one piece probably have a like a bone layer for this part and just have the body where I cut it a little bit um, right before like the thigh right there and then of course again you'll have each arm and um, on this particular one there's not going to be any uh, need for the legs because it'll be a probably a waste uh, shot or whatever coming in and what was this what, okay yeah I remember playing around with it. and what I would keep separate Templates usually because most sometimes what I'll do is I'll really end up changing everything. So, so I have to remember what color it is, and I, I use the storage like I said before with uh, and I always end up changing a lot of things. So it looks weird now, but um, when everything we get everything in Moho, and I'm gonna more than likely draw this out instead of just having that and I can just remember I uh, use the symbol more than likely what I'll end up doing and changing so uh, the body part I need to break it real quick So let's see, cutting right here. The jacket was going to be, it will be separate. So basically you'll have this part here. Edit paste. So you'll have this body piece and I think I cut this a little bit lower but sometimes you can make this that this one little piece here say you know right where this is separate from this as well so you know if you have a scene where this is kind of you know this is moving sometimes the legs move a little bit with it but it's not going to be big movements and again, we would have this here separate as well. I always end up changing it. I can't even see where I put the other one at. 
so that would be there. And I will keep this separate. So uh, we'll do the head, uh, the hair part. I'm going to grab that real quick. Or is it? this here and again we'll vectorize it later try to get everything matched up the way we want it so um, this will be separate and I had to I put the head in the wrong what you call it copy So you change the angles of whatever you like on there. Um, but the only thing we would um, add would probably be the uh, the shadows, right? So go the hair. So you would end up adding that. So it'll be that color, but a little bit darker. And then make sure that the shadows effectively, basically, uh, along the line of where this is. So this would be technically underneath uh, the hair. Whenever you get everything vectorized, and, but the shadow will be all like it was before. It will be, uh, and this would be like a point here. And basically just making shadow outlines for the parts of the hair or whatever you want to do with that one. Or you can just do it all uh, all dark. From where the hair is. And remember this part here, you got to keep it above the eyebrows and everything else. So whatever you do with those, the, sh the uh, shadows and everything, that'll come out after the fact. Right, so uh, shadow eyes, it should kind of have shadow all the way down to uh, where the hair is. So look at the eyebrows around the eye. So you'll have that dark part here. Kind of like in here and a little bit below the eyes. Slight. So uh, basically, the nose, right? Because we're if you're building the facial structure, you're gonna have shadows. Keep this. underneath the hair as well so basically you would you know start doing that that shading uh, on this side and then whatever sh shading you do is going to create how you want the nose to, to kind of look um, make sure you always have it around the eye part as well And this will be a lot cleaner when we do do the vector uh, part, right? So shadows are pretty much going to be all over. Slower. And on top. So it's so going to be up to you how you kind of you know put everything together. Faces off here, so 
But when we vectorize it, we can fix the face and everything like that. Should look more closer to this here. So I'm going to just fix that like so. And a little bit inward. And it's kind of close enough. So whenever you do go and you go back and you're doing the uh, just the face, remember you're going to keep the eyeballs out. And we'll just duplicate this and we'll reverse it for the other side. So this little line here, wherever that shading is on the outside, you'll you'll notice that and whenever they're uh, but this would be a little bit wherever that whatever that uh, brim on the nose is and you can play around with it if you think it's like you know something you like a lot of times I see a lot of like gray off for the you know for the Uh, the shadow depends on you. Sometimes gray looks a little bit better. So basically, you would have all of those. What is this? Oh, oh let's change the animals. So So the so you would have the eye uh, the eyeballs would be separate. So you'll end up making like two of those. And you don't have to look worry about the white. Uh, on the other side as far as the uh, the back it will just be clear because you can put that into a uh, moho and so you would have the eyeballs of course you would have the eyebrow It's up to you how we want to like them. We'll just remember this will be uh, separate. So the eyebrows. Not gonna arch anything there. Would be below the hair as well. That's why you would have it separate. So eyebrows are gonna be underneath. So that uh, so the eyebrows should be separated and the eyeballs, right? So let's go in hair, right? That's separate. And top of the winter coat. Right. Right about that. And this top body piece. And if you're doing some kind of half scene where the legs are not uh, needed. So um, you would have all of these 
separated. So we want that of course, then the hair. The shadow you can do later because it won't really matter. Uh, but you know, you can import you know one of the eyes and I'm gonna change these eyes so but else how that'll be and so the hair will be on top and then this would be separate and then the eyebrows right make sure when you do it it'll be below the hair And typically what I would do is, if you look at this, is this, or it's not cut out, so. Um, basically what I would do is I'll have this here, and this would be the uh, white backdrop. Because when you vectorize this, remember, well, we'll do it now, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Eight colors is good enough for me. Probably less, but so it would cut out the uh, the white part. So when you import it into, and this is how I do it. Other people have a, uh, like a a mask or something they do. Um, so basically, this is your head, but. I would have a little piece like this and that would go like so underneath let's go and separate it here So on the vector, whenever it does vectorize, uh, I usually get try to get the the smaller one. Sometimes I have a uh, it'll be a thicker line, but uh, sometimes not. So uh, remember, so say this, we'll do this as a black outline. get rid of all the uh, this here because we have that separated out all right I'm change the nose but get rid of that for now oh made a mistake You can use your template if you like as well. So, which means you can just kind of put this on top, kind of get all that line as thin as you like. Kind of make sure that you know there's no overlapping on the other side. Well, I can probably do this by hand. nodes so basically on my node I would have uh, this one here for the point All right uh, one here like so and I would just cut out all the other ones and if I wanted the straight line I'll just select that and you know, straighten it out a little bit more for me. But um, I usually will use this as a guide. And 
and I will change the color. Like so. And kind of so I can see what the actual outline is. Alright, so as thin as you want to get it. You can just line everything up as close as you like. Alright, and then kind of do that for the whole thing. So, um, once we do have this piece, let's go back to black here. Black, I said. Oh. So when we do the bucket full, I feel let's grab that here and fill it up like so. Sure, we're matching the right color. And we'll do the same thing what we do for the hair. Make sure it's below the black outline. So when you click that, this black outline should be on top. All right. Uh, I'm going to do something here because I know what I'm going to do with the ears later. So technically, we don't need any of this. And on the outline of the hair part, we have, I'm sorry, the outline of the ear part. Um, I usually will make this exactly how I like it here. Let's fix it now, but get it going. So, cut. So cut here. We got that. Where you have a circle in the middle, I'll show you that right now. So we don't need this. Cut. So this little circle will become the uh, the ear basically. We just basically pull this out however you like. And when you open it up like so. And kind of work out however you want that uh, ear to, to look. It's all kinds of ear style. It's up to you. Uh, remember when it's facing forward. Uh, I mean, it should be looking at the template. But whatever it's uh, facing forward. Uh, remember that they the ears are a little different well, I'm not going to really go into playing around with that too much it's a little bit thinner mm, stop doing that I when it does that and you can kind of get all the lines perfect as you like like so um, so on the the eyes remember uh, you're pretty uh, what I do here is I just do a, uh, a cutout so on here on here And we do the same thing on the, as far as the outline, right? And technically, this would be a black outline for the eyes. And a lot of nodes that you really won't need. 
Um, but as long as you have that, like so, cut the, you don't need a lot of them. Just cut. And, So when we do go to uh, our template and you put this on top, and let's close down a little bit and change the colors, and you would just basically match that up with the eye, you, whatever hour you want the eye to look. And because we're gonna have a black outline on the outside, just need to really get really pretty close to what it should be here. But we're gonna have an outline that goes on top of the eye, so like that. Same thing here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> no, uh, on that other text message you would send me, what time is it here? I'm in Florida. I think I to told you that. Let's see. Uh, 4.41 in Florida. And no hurricane yet. And if you're having a hard time with like the nodes and everything like that, you can always round them out. I think I went over that before. And remember, it'll have a black outline, so as long as we're in the, that same area of what that eye looks like. For me, we'll, once I kind of get, I'm not, it doesn't have to be perfect on the other side, but uh, I'll usually do something like this here. Like right, that. And duplicate it. And then see how then. I get it the way I look. Uh, I like the way it looks. I'll use the paint bucket and you know, give me it should give me an outline there like that. All right, and then you'll just make two of these because these are going to be on the outline. And if you need to make adjustments, you can. If you notice here, you see this little black part here. Um, the way I do that is go ahead and use the circle like so. Do the fill. And now we have that little piece that goes there. And again, you would just match it up close as you can get it over the way you like it and these would be kind of joined together uh, outline right about there right yep and this here and again I'm not caring about like this little part I'll probably close that up anyway um, but you want to get it as close as you can there Okay, let's 
good enough for me. And again, I, I keep the template, but it's up to you. And remember, this should be on top of whatever the, uh, the face was. And to make these round, you just click on the here, these boxes, and you click on the round one. And these become round. So it'll be easy for you to kind of, you know, make adjustments when you, where you need. Some of them, you don't know, have to keep them square, but again, it's up to you. Whatever you like. Again, you would can carve all of this out here to get it exactly how close you want it as far as the template. Uh, and this would go on top of that. And you can make adjustments as needed. And this two pieces here will just Duplicate it, reverse, again we'll make these round, we can f that circle right there, make this round, like so. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the template real quick and after that we're going to take a look at some music. And I don't get this as close as I need to get it. Uh, no, I was never in a hurricane. When I was in uh, Houston, Texas, we did have hail once. I think I did. We did see. There was one time in. Uh, when I was visiting my grandparents in Cocoa Beach a very long time ago. That had, that did have hail one day as well. But the weirdest weather would be. Houston, Texas when there was snow. 
Oh, not snow, but hail. It, got, it gets pretty cold, but that was a weird one that day. Basically, ice falling from the ground. Yeah, picky. Yeah, I wouldn't say picky, um, but whenever I'm done, the vector cleans everything up the way I like it. But whatever I'm done, uh, I I'll use it again sometimes. So I just take my time and getting it as close as I can get it to what I want. the ear sometimes you'll have a little that little piece here that kind of pokes out Round, click all three of these around like so. We'll keep this kind of pointy at the, over here, like Spock, but down here, we'll make it round. So on this right here, I'm not going to cut, but usually like I'll cut here because of what the ear is going to be kind of looking at. But I haven't filled it, so I don't, I'm not going to cut there. But, um, you know, this black line here, that's where you could cut right there if you wanted to. But I'm going to be filling so I'm not going to cut it yet. And the part under the hair doesn't really matter. Um, but you can get as close as you like. What that part won't be seen. So it's up to you. We just had to close it because we we used the f uh, the fill the kind of so whatever technically is like you know anything covered by the hair top part don't matter. We just need to use it as a fill. But I'm going to keep the template, so um, I'll probably, you know, really make the head a full head. And again, here for the other side. Um, so for the ear mm -hmm. 
So whenever this is like so, and I just make a mark on the outside, because we're basically going to use the paint bucket to fill, and then um, we'll reverse it. So you piece that there as you like. Sometimes I'll keep it separate, but again, it's up to you. Make these round here. Make this round here. This one, we don't need that. Okay. And again, when we start to get over there, it's kind of like um, it's hidden under the hair. Now, you do have a choice. For me, what I'm going to do is just duplicate this one, reverse it. And then have that there, like so. Mm I'm not going to do another one, but I usually have a backup. Grab it, yeah. In case something happens to the other one. Then change these around. Now, um, I don't know if I think someone asked me this before, so I'm going to show you. So it depends on how thin you want it to get be but it's up to you and I think someone asked this before I can't remember it's, uh, five o'clock might be getting close to bit time so right um so usually what I'll do is you can measure the ears over like, you know, just make a little bar here just to make sure everything's even. Um, but this is going to be the secondary, so. Uh, it cuts. So again, go back to my little tool. Like so. Anything separated from the other color. paint it like that and, and then duplicate and re 
first. Edit, duplicate, and then reverse. Every time I see uh, say duplicate, I keep thinking of that invincible. <laughs> And uh, you can keep the template. So however you want to, you know, piece it together. It's up to you. Uh, the other cool thing is what you can do as well. If you want to keep making the mask or whatever, make it black. Gotta make sure everything's the same color, uh, and then you can do it again. Now that you you know those two pieces, you want to just make it one piece. You can just do it again, like so. Oh, it's not large enough. Thread-wise, it's a little bit different sometimes. So I'm gonna. Make sure I group them all. And I'm just showing you all the different ways to kind of mess around with this stuff. Did it make a piece? Oh, it did. <laughs> I didn't think it did it. I guess it did. So, um, it's got to be careful. So, whenever you do the, the, uh, wait a minute. What is that? This, that's not the same piece. That's what I thought. I didn't make it. And again, this part really doesn't matter, but you just need to close it up. Same thing here. So now we can go to the paint bucket, see if it does it right. And threshold a little higher. Yeah, so it's not high enough. Okay. Edit. Object group. Just keep that there for now. I'm gonna, you know what? I'll export it. So we'll have it for later. Send it away. And let's go ahead and get this uh, new. And I'm just going to create another Inkscape here. And this is stuff I do so I don't forget. Copy. Paste. Let's get that. What's the other one? Oh, the eyes. Mm-hmm. 
swore those swords like the oh. Oh, the eyebrows. I'll do those later. Just want to get to a less cluttered thing. Was the other thing I said I was gonna put in That's all we needed, right? Um, the nose will end up recreating, but as long as it's a vector, uh, that's all I care about. You can see the difference between how rough the other one looks uh, in comparison. So whenever you do color and get this all cracking, everything looks a lot cleaner. Template, we can go and I guess do that right now, real quick. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So whenever this, uh, I, hold on for a sec. Uh, do, undo. Um, wherever you're working on nose, you can do that as well. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna just create what I need. You know what? Let's use the circle. Edit duplicates. Most of the things I'm doing here, as far as noses, I usually will just make a shadow kind of thing. Not really a real nose in that sense. And uh, again, just for like my template, so I'll remember what shape the nose was in mm -hmm. 
round. And the mouse is, you know, something you don't need to really worry about. And on again on this one here, uh, I kind of use shadows to do it. So we'll can thin this out here. And you can always back up whatever you need to back up. That's what the other uh, page or the other Inkscape will be for. So whenever I do separate everything else, I'll have a backup for everything I kind of need. Make this one piece here. Mm -hmm. And cut all these pieces out of here. So one oh, I might as well color it or fill it now, so I see the difference. Change the color here. Where's the... Didn't I just make a nose? Where'd that go? What the hell? Oh, let's undo. Undo. Change the color for that outline. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, cut, and I'll probably make this a lot thinner going when the final thing is here. So, for now, that's okay. Close enough. And let's go ahead and 
group that together. Too long. <laughs> I'll do the. Uh, let me go ahead and do the music thing real quick. Play around with this later. On these other videos. I guess I could do the, the shading part real quick. So whenever I um put this underneath mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, whenever you're doing like those shadows and everything like that, I think I went through that before. Make sure everything's kind of hidden here. But make sure everything's on top that needs to be on top. So for the, uh, when you're talking about the shading part, for the mouth and nose, small letter, S small kind of changes, uh, if you look. So I'm going to do it. Look. And again, it depends on you know what you want it to kind of look like, but um. Usually there's like two different shadows here because you're just going to make the, uh, the nose and then let's see uh, duplicates so when you do start doing the, the shadow part of it what the hell is going on and objects fill stroke I forgot they are their separate thing um, so whenever you do start doing like your, the, the shading part of it, you don't really need to do a lot for the nose. Uh, 
so whenever we do the basically it's going to be the shine of the nose and then it's going to be uh, the shadow uh, underneath and you don't have, really have to do a lot for that I'll show you here and make sure it's always under Neat. So usually, if you put this, uh, you know, this kind of blur this out. Get it right there. Um, so whenever you do it, and you you start putting like the shadows, uh, just kind of think about, you know, how your nose is or what the, the shadow is going to be. So it'll be kind of like. And you, you, again, uh, my noses are usually very thin, so uh, I'm just gonna, it's just a small part, all right? So you don't really have to do that much. All they're looking for is like the tip of the nose, and then, uh, of course, underneath, you'll have that shadow there. The lips are kind of like the same way, but uh, kind of the opposite. So let me duplicate this here. Um, for the lips, basically, you'll have uh, like a lighter part. Uh, if you look here, where you see this is a little bit different or light, so like so, uh, and you can just make it as subtle as you like. But that's what it would, you know, just basically making the lip part of it. So, and it doesn't take a lot and then uh, the top part and again now duplicate like so so make sure this is below this whatever you do it's up to you um, usually if it's a male figure for me or character um, that top part is not going to be, oh, there's not going to be a lot of top, but the bottom part, you know, and you can do the blending at the top part that you see a little whatever, but it's not going to be something that kind of stands out. And you can also do the little notch under here if you like as well. But let's go ahead and kind of fill everything we need to fill uh, I'm not going to do the vector here today take too long but same concept for the eyes make sure everything is underneath like that like so So we start playing around with shadows, edit, duplicate, just need the, uh, the under eye part, and that shadow would kind of be same color as under the, uh, your nose, so uh, it's up to you, it could be real sh sh um, subtle or not, most of the time I'm a little bit I don't want it to, it depends on the scene but most of the time I don't want it to be too crazy because uh, it'll look like the character is you know sleepy or whatever so the more you kind of put it together you know, it could be change everything about the way it kind of looks you know so but you would have that there would be underneath the eye And you can keep this one piece here to kind of like for the nose. And I'm going to move the nose over if you like. I usually will keep them separate. But that shading that goes here where you, there's like a white line uh, kind of area. That will kind of give you the curvature of what the, your nose is going to look like. And then of course you'll blend it all in. 
you know. Uh, you'll do the same thing, edit, uh, duplicate it, and I'll mirror it here for the other side. Just make sure it's below everything you need to be below. Now, let's place this black outline. So, whenever uh, let's get this nose fixed. That's usually what I do for the nodes. Um, so, whenever you do set this up, you can start to structure the face based on just shading alone, um, right? So, if you have a nose or that a peak, however uh, you know long you want it to be, it's up to you. Um, but you can use that all together as far as under the eye and then the, this middle part for the nose. I don't. I keep those separate because. Uh, there's a certain look sometimes you want to uh, kind of exaggerate sometimes um, but again it's up to you but that's where your shading would be again it would also be above the eye anything that's on the uh, this like the outside same thing for the when you start looking at the chin and I'm just duplicating the shadow part. So uh, when you start getting like underneath the chin, go, there go. Um, that shadow play a big role there. Um, be careful though, because uh, I don't want the lips to look like they're like a character for a girl. So whenever you do start doing your shadow, just you know be aware of. You know, because you'll you'll change the characteristics of other you know lines on your thing so just be careful out here um, but again you know like the you know the face on the outside that little bit darker and they'll all have to look the same you know what I mean whatever you want to do you can you know play around with it if you want it to look a like a little bit lighter as far as the the skin tone that's what you can use there for that uh, most importantly you know make sure that the shading as far as uh, let me go ahead and fill this in uh, for wherever here is going to be come on uh, make sure you kind of take your time here with all that because uh, there will be shadows that are just shadows for the like this maybe the string of hair that's right here right so that would you can use one whole uh, just make sure this is under the hair so when you do you know start doing your shadows uh, the hair should be you know underneath all of that and you again you can change the shadows to whatever you like and you know but make sure you do you gotta do the outline for all of that you gotta just make sure all that stuff is outlined because um, when you do finalize and everything's vector um, little changes you you know uh, you'll see them so just kind of remember that here um, on the ear part whenever you do feel for ears usually there's a part of the ear that's darker than the others And again, you can play around with you know different ways of doing it. Um, but for your highlights, highlights usually be uh, on this little this coverage right here. Yes. So you know that little. line that goes sometimes all across the ear um, so, and again you can play around with it doesn't you know however you want it to look and again it's just going to depend on you know your preference Sometimes I'll do different shadows on there. Usually on this it'll be one or two. Um, 
you know, different things shadow wise. Um, but remember, you can always, you know, whenever you do blend it, as subtle as you want to make it, you know, it does have an effect there. So we'll just, you know, play around with it, see what you like. Um, again, here as well. Usually what I'll do is I'll have something, I won't blur it, just keep it as clean as possible, but I'll, the opacity kind of lower it, right? So certain dark areas that are kind of in the ear or close to where it's going to be going in the ear. And then you'll have this other dark part here. That, that certain areas where this is where the curvature is so technically this is the back part of the ear so you know that would you would have the shadow around this kind of area and again uh, you can play around with it this part here would for me personally would be a little bit lighter this whole like run here and if you want to just keep the it, you know the field color already there and you want to just do something on top um, you know for the ear you can do that there and again go as dark as you like usually when the, the I have a hair thing um, I don't really want to have that too bright or whatever right because again there should be uh, shadows when it comes to the hair so if you make this really crazy bright it kind of looks weird so um, but again use it as a template and like change whatever you like whenever you do get everything finalized uh, the last touch you could do um, is like the red part of the cheeks and depicting you know this, this depending on your character you can you know do as much as you want um, but usually that'll be on this the cheek part right in this kind of area here on both sides I usually will do it unless there's like a dark scene but you want to kind of you know know where those look to be placed make sure when you do start getting a lot of different shadows certain ones you're going to want that are on top alright and you know some you want below so just you know, kind of keep that in mind when it comes to you know, the little subtleties you want to add. And again, whenever you do the face, it's good to take the time to do it, get it exactly how you like it. Um, for me, you'll be using it again, but you you will um, basically what was before is like this is going to be a lot cleaner than this. So when you do get all your coloring and everything done, uh, it, it, you'll see the, uh, the difference um, yourself. And I always use to kind of give me a feel of what it's going to look like. Uh, I'll kind of check it against a black um, backdrop to kind of give me, you know, technically what it'll start to look like as far as shading um, this kind of end up looking like it's not Pinocchio um, but again play around with that the shading part and on the outline part um, remember you'll have this piece that's going to be for the the eyeballs here and you just have that go to the bottom of all of the layers. Now for me whenever I do that I usually will have a little uh, this will be a little bit you know darker on the corner of the eye. Doesn't have to be too crazy but you know not so totally you know white unless that's the look you're going for. And and then you again you'll have your uh, you know 
your eyeballs and everything separated out so when you do shoot it into uh, moho doesn't go like that so it's like the cancel so um so I would have a gray piece here and duplicate it and then one on this side here and kind of blend it in but just to make sure you kind of get the the shadows of the eyes and everything like that and again it's your choice whatever you want to do as far as everything up there but the, the goal is to have this uh, look as clean as possible compared to you know once you whatever you drew you want to try to get it as close as possible and you want to blend everything as as you know as well as you can and again you can always change how you want those you know anything to look you just it's just pieces put together um, but remember this is separate and the hair will be separate the eyeball of course you know the eyebrows will be separate and then the headpiece will be like so so this will be separate so So you'll have the, the white part for the eyes and it'll go behind the head and then of course the eyebrows will be on top and lastly it'll be the, uh, the hair needs to go on top of everything so whenever I do vectorize the hair there are shadowed, certain shadows for the hair, but you don't have to go too detailed into that. And, and the, probably chop it up. Oh, and take your time, you know. You don't have to rush everything. And it doesn't all have to be super perfect whenever you do get everything uh, situated whenever you take your time you you'll feel reward at the end because you know you did everything you know, took your time and did it the right way without rushing um, whenever you do get all your coloring and all that stuff like that um, don't do what I just did <laughs> make sure that everything all the blends you added are all uh, grouped together not necessarily the, uh, the eyes but again that will be on your uh, preference of what you want to see So whenever you do just have that all together, you know, make sure everything is uh, grouped. So when you do uh, export that piece, it will become just one. Uh, object and uh, on this one as well I think that one we had, uh, it had the eye or the, the white to the eye uh, messed up so we'll do that again group and export finish the last part for um, 
someone was asking me about the the template for the music. Uh, it depends on the the, uh, the atmosphere. Um, and on the, on the usually if it's an action scene stuff like that, you want to kind of have it. This was four. Six. I think I remember what this was for. Uh, so what they call like transitioning sounds, things like that, right? So, the hell is mute. So, the basic sounds are all gonna kind of seem the same when you're doing like a transition, right? So whatever that sound is, you'll it's a repetitive thing when you're like, oh, we're bringing the character, or this sound represents the character, and that's most of the time you can get away with that and kind of have when you hear the that a certain tone right with that character you, you have like a theme music that goes along with it and they're all going to be different for each one each uh different character it just it's always work better that way when you are um doing horns usually that's something where it's, it's like an epic feel or a battle or um, mostly space. I, I the horns are used sometimes in other action movies, but most of the time it's like a fantasy or kind of vibe that you want it to kind of have. Um, and transition sounds. Um, you know, this one might be something where you know. Uh, a, a castle is in the scene, right? And it kind of gives you the theme about um, like throne, like I would call it music, you know? But most of the time when you hear that throne type of music, it's gonna be on either an action scene or, or something kind of epic to bring you back into the scene. And, and they all could be different. But most of the time, it's going to be a horn that does that. You know, that's what our ears have adapted to, so to speak. Um, I'll probably do a video on the transitions and I'll kind of put it in a scene. But there's subtle differences. And again, it's going to be depending on what you know your character is and, and how you wanna uh, kinda use them together so and you can create your own uh, like sound effects as well so just whenever you're writing it out or you're doing your uh, the, the storyboard just keep in mind what type of music you want to have that uh, attached to um, but I'll do uh, this one's kind of long. I'm going to do that in the next uh, video and appreciate uh, you guys watching the videos and any questions or anything like that. You can always send me an email. All right. I hope you guys have a great day. I'm a vampire, so it's almost time for me to sleep. So, uh, but thank you very much for watching the videos and thanks for the questions and the, the other chat. Uh, YouTube, again, I will start having a, some kind of dialogue um, kind of thing come up, um, I would say, next couple of weeks maybe. And the ones that are, are uh, already a signed up as far as a membership, um, 
you will be getting a personalized uh, you know I would say first draft of the scenes um, for the project and uh, just to show appreciation I hope you guys have a great day I hope your family is doing well and thanks again for uh, watching the video